what you do. Yeah, totally. And I, and I love the point that you talked about a second ago with the credential world that we live in. I think, and I don't want to go on too big of a tangent here, um, but I do think that that construct is shifting. I think there's a large construct shifting in society and culture right now where we're seeing it across the board in entertainment and sports and culture, like fashion, like all these, I mean, shoot, like digital applications, like anybody that's built any meaningful product, like didn't get a college degree, mm-hmm. right? Like you to go to the backstories of like these applications that are being used by, you know, hundred of million or billion dollar companies, like they're built by people that don't have credentials, mm-hmm. right? And so I think this unraveling is happening mm-hmm. in society and culture around like, what is the applicability of that? On the other side, I do agree that there are certain things that you just don't touch without like the proper training, right? Sure. Like there are cliffs that you hit and you're like, ah, like I, this is out of my universe. And like, this needs a special type of approach or coach or person to do that. So I'm completely on board with that. I think I tend to, for what we do and how we've constructed what we do, I err on the side of life experiences as the tool for the guide. And I don't, I don't even use the word coach and either does Krista. We call it, we say guide. Mm-hmm. It's like, um, we liken it to mountains where you go to a mountain and you see this peak and you say, I want to climb it. But you would use a guide to tell you, especially if you use something as you know, treacherous and gnarly as Everest, right? Mm-hmm. You're, you would use a guide. Like they know where the base camps are. They know the routes. They know where it's less dangerous. They know, they know the gear you need and all these things. So you would employ somebody to give you that space to become a climber, to become, to become the person that can summit this thing. And that's what I think life experience gives you. But the framework is designed in a way that it's not prescriptive. Like I said, like we're, we are not, and I've never prescribed anything in either as Krista around what someone should do. It is a deep introspection, introspective experiment. It's like, how many times are we taught or given the space to ask ourselves very deep questions that allow us to go into our own layers? Mm -hmm. Very few times, Mm -hmm. every single day. I mean, if you go into a nine to five or a career, like you have, unless you're, you know, at the top and you have the ability to think a little bit more openly, you have a very specific set of things you have to do every day. And that rules and governs a lot of your life, right? Mm -hmm. And then think of all the other components of your lifestyle, right? Especially if you have children, rules and governs, like there's a lot of gravity there. We don't, as people, spend a lot of time in pause or in, or in stillness or in even, even the active effort of going into exploring myself, right? That's not something that we're taught. And it's starting to become new. I mean, you see some of these newer higher education systems that are doing, like Stanford has one that's like a life design class that actually designers teach. Mm-hmm. And that's what I think is interesting about what we do is it's very, very synonymous to a design project. Right, you're giving someone this framework that you've crafted that really gives them space to just go into it. So that's my philosophy um, on 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 just credentials.